Hi, so in our uh, next video here we're going to go over V-Ray materials or uh, more specifically the V-Ray material which is um, for those of you who are experienced with mental ray you can consider it a monolithic shader and uh, as such it contains just about every attribute you're going to need to uh, to do most basic materials the, uh, we'll also go over briefly in the video the V-Ray blend material, which you'll be using quite often to combine materials. Now to, uh, to demo this, I'm going to be using V-Ray RT, which is still in beta, so um, some of you may not have access to it, but, uh, and I wasn't going to show it, but the, uh, it makes sense because it gives quick feedback to what we're going to do. So let's take a quick look at the scene as it's set up. Let's instigate a, a V-Ray RT render, which is under IPR. We'll do IPR render of the existing camera, which is this viewport here. And so now we have a uh, interactive uh, V-Ray RT render of the scene. The scene is set up with a uh, simple HDR dome light and uh, I usually do uh, tests for materials using HDRI dome lights um, just because it gives a pretty accurate uh, idea of what the reflectivity of my materials are going to be. Um, so you can see that this part is generally a very glossy chrome and uh, by glossy I mean very soft reflection so uh, mental ray and V-ray both use gloss as a term to soften and blur reflections. Uh, this side part is a black plastic and the reflections are only slightly blurred so they're still fairly clear and there is a fairly matte black plastic material on that part so let's take a, a closer look at the first uh, most basic material on here this uh, black plastic move this out of the way we graft graft this we have the black plastic material so uh, besides being a monolithic shader, which is a term um, commonly used in, in mental ray to describe a shader that has um, a great deal of attributes to control um, the look of it, it tries to uh, concatenate all the possible material settings into one complete material. Uh, it's also a, a, an energy conserving material so that it retains a um, a realistic response to light. Energy conserving just means that uh, the material will uh, not reflect any more light than it receives. So um, in a non-physically accurate material you could have a diffuse color of white and have a reflection of white and it would double itself up and you'd have more more light reflecting off that material than, than is coming in and that would obviously make the material uh, react unnaturally. And traditionally, scanline, uh, older scanline renderers would often use this both for good things, for trickery, and uh, would often be a mistake and make for unrealistic renders as well. Now, let's get into uh, this material. Uh, the diffuse color is very nearly black. We've got uh, um, a basic BRDF of Blin. You can set your specular reflections to either Blin, Fong, or Ward. Um, we can go into specifics of that later, but I generally just use either Blin or Ward for special, uh, more rough surfaces. Um, so we'll keep it Blin for now. The reflection color is just a tiny bit. Uh, this reflection amount is a multiplier for the reflection color. So we left, leave it full at one, a slight reflection color, and the more important setting is the reflection glossiness. We can see this slider is down to about 0.6. That slider, or it is the uh, the blurriness of the reflection. So the higher we set the glossiness, the sharper the reflections will be. So let's take a look at how that reacts on that black plastic material. And let's pump up the reflections a little brighter so that you can really see how those reflections are working reflection glossiness. Let's take it all the way up and we'll get perfectly sharp reflections on that material. Now that makes for an interesting chrome material but uh, let's bring it back down to a nice plastic 
sort of blurry reflection and bring the reflection color back down. And it's essentially as simple as that to make your basic plastic materials. People often think they need a, uh, a library of, of pre-made uh, or preset materials and sometimes they're fun to browse through but you really don't if you really begin to understand how this material editor works you're not going to need many pre-made materials. Now you'll notice down here under uh, just under reflection glossiness we have a subdivs slider. Now if you watched the previous video on Niederhorst settings you should know that this, set, this slider will have essentially no effect on the quality of your material because it is all being handled by the DMC sampler. So you can have your reflection subdivs to one and it wouldn't matter. Um, another thing to note about uh, certain materials like glass and other dielectrics is they often exhibit a Fresnel, a Fresnel reflection. A black plastic that's fairly diffuse like this wouldn't wouldn't really uh, have much of a Fresnel uh, fall off so let's look at this glossy black plastic which I think exhibits more of that effect and if you look yeah I have a, a Fresnel set up there now that Fresnel means that the uh, material will be more reflective on glancing or side edges than it is when it's facing you so if I face this object at me you'll see it's not terribly reflective but when it's facing away from me it's much more reflective um, now the effect is subtle here because I have my IOR up and that's what controls how how uh, powerful that Fresnel effect is your index of refraction now even though I'm not refracting anything IOR still has an effect on reflections as well so if you scroll down to the refraction area you'll see that I have a 1.5 which is fairly glass like response you can set this even lower and you'll see almost no reflections actually at a 1 you will see no reflections if you set, set at 1.1 you'll see those reflections get brighter at glancing edges and just about disappear at facing edges. Now as I mentioned glass is fairly standard at 1.5 or 1.6 IOR. If you set this to um, a higher setting say up to about 3 you really get pretty much even reflections across the surface. There is a Fresnel effect it's just hard to discern uh, in in, a, in this particular setup. So let's set that back down to something more realistic. Uh, by the way, 1.3 is uh, fairly common for water. And not an entirely bad effect here. Um, one thing to note about Fresnel before we leave that subject is um, if, if you control your IOR here in refraction area, you're conserving energy and you are keeping your material physically accurate but you can disconnect it and up here in the reflection section there's a checkbox for lock Fresnel IOR you can unlock the reflection IOR from the refraction IOR so that you can have uh, say a transparent or refractive material that exhibits a different reflective IOR than refractive it's not physically accurate necessarily but <coughs> it does give you freedom to tweak. So now I can change my IOR, reflection IOR separately. So let's quick graph the uh, chrome. It's not going to exhibit anything particularly new, but just to, to be complete about it. Um, chrome, you'll notice that the diffuse color is all the way down because it's entirely reflective. So it doesn't, you could have a diffuse color if you wanted, it wouldn't change the material at all because our reflection color is all the way up and our amount is all the way up so we are a completely reflective surface. Um, a mirror like or chrome finish is does not exhibit a Fresnel effect so you can keep that toggled off uh, therefore the IOR doesn't matter. 
and the only thing that really matters in this metal material is the reflection glossiness. So let's uh, check that out. We have this at about 0.76. We can bring it up and again we'll exhibit much sharper reflections. Now if you bring it way down, this is uh, the equivalent to um, a diffuse material really, a, a really slow and poor way to sample a diffuse or Lambertian material. Uh, I would almost never suggest going this low. It, it'd probably be, be better that you just use a Lambert material. So probably about 0.5 is the lowest useful setting for glossies, but who knows, you may find some uh, special reason to go below that.